Hey, nerds. Check one, two. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hamster's Hobby Hang. Did that one get through? That one got through. <laughs> nice. It's not a Hamster's Hobby Hang if it doesn't instantly start with some kind of technical difficulties. I'm just, okay, so before before the stream started, I was showing them uh, the Twitter page, uh, TMNT Wikipedia titles, which is a Twitter account that exclusively finds Wikipedia articles that have uh, the appropriate amount of syllables to fit into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song. <laughs> um, it's a very good a very good thing. Little Baby Face Foundation is, is my favorite one so far. How's everybody doing? Hold on. Are they frozen can on the hear? stream? Can they not hear us? No, they can hear you, but on my Discord, you're good, but on the stream... Okay, now it's good. Now it's good. Now it's good. Now it's good. Yeah, now Oh, now they can hear us? No, you, they've always been able to hear. Well, I think. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Verdict says you're covering the most important issues of our time with Teenage Mutant syllables. <laughs> but yes, Topulus, I, I wasn't ha eating a Hot Pocket this time. I had a, a good old New York slice. I miss pizza. I haven't had pizza in a while, like the regular New York slice. Well... Luckily, I probably eat enough pizza for all three of us because it's right across the street. I've I've actually been really cutting down on pizza during the pandemic, which is wild. You think I'd be eating more? I've actually somehow been eating less pizza. I'm getting a lot more sandwiches and burgers. Okay. So it's not that I've traded up for healthier things. Right. I just stopped doing pizza as much. I don't know. It's just like. There's no healthy spot nearby me, and I am. Whenever I need something last minute, which is basically always, because I'm a great planner, I just yeah. run across there and grab it. Two Bros is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Two Bros is a good dollar slice. That's a great dollar slice. Sometimes to the best fucking pizza. I mean, okay, maybe not maybe the best from here. Sometimes really solid. Sometimes like they're the they're the best pizza ever made. <laughs> you can't get better pizza than than two bros two bros was my lunch for a year yeah i feel that working from home across from my my local spot that's basically been me too pizza is a vegetable so it's healthy yes especially the slices i get have many vegetables not i've been getting pretty into veggie pizzas for me i can only have pizza every now and then otherwise it's like my body starts, my body gets really mad at me if I have a lot of pizza. Well, if I have a lot of, you know, like the fast food chain pizza in particular. Yeah. If I have like pizza that's made with real ingredients, it's not as bad. But like my, my really? body really? only starts rejecting Domino's and Papa John's, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm just used to feeling like crap. There's also that. <laughs> it's that thing where, like, yeah, once you stop putting your body through it, your body kind of loses its tolerance for uh, yeah for putting up with it all the time. It's a very valid thing. Yeah, the the I've only felt I, I felt the worst when I would like have short stretches of eating healthy because then when I fell back into it, I'd be like, wait, this is awful. Yeah, you couldn't commit to it long enough to actually <laughs> eat well. Yeah. But then you kept like slowly losing your uh, your immunity, right? Immunity. Um. Yeah. Mesa, aren't you always thinking Domino's? I, I've, I'm gonna be honest. I've cashed in some free pizzas with Domino's. That's how much how much Domino's I've got. Because here's the thing, and I saw someone say this: Why are you getting chain pizza in NYC? It's a different thing, right? It's a mood. Yeah. Like, like it's Domino's is not, yeah. It, Domino's isn't pizza. It's Domino's, capital D Domino's. You know what I mean? And if you want pizza for real, then you then you go to your spot. Yeah, chain chain pizza is very different than getting like 
actual pizza at like a pizzeria, you know? Right. Yeah, it's like you won't call Taco Bell tacos if you want a taco. It's like, oh, why not just get the Lunchables pizzas? Those are not. <laughs> those are those are their own thing entirely. Right. Wait, then I never had real pizza. That's all I had, Lunchables. Man, as a kid, I thought Lunchables pizza was such a cool idea. I think back to it, I'm like, why did I settle for that? That was the best day of the week when you, you packed a pizza Lunchable. No, but I look back at it, and I'm like, there's no way that was good. Like, thinking back to it, I'm like, the texture of that shortbread, like, crust thing was not good. Oh, right. <laughs> I think there's just something about being a kid and, like, the novelty of, like, making it, like, building it with all the ingredients in there. That's fair. And, of course, you get, like, the candy treat at the end, That's too. the thing. I, I think I just held out to get the pizza that was just chocolate sauce and M&M's. <laughs> yeah. But even that. Even that was good. Right. Like, back at it, I'm like, that wasn't good chocolate sauce. <laughs> Better than the dessert pizza that uh, Domino's once had. Yeah, the best the best dessert pizza comes from Godfather's Pizza and their lunch buffet. I think I think I've already uh, made this argument though. I had some pretty good uh, dessert pizzas in Japan. I have uh, only, Japanese not pizza though. I have only heard bad things about Godfather's. Yeah, it's not good, but it's a lunch buffet, so you eat That's a lot of it. Good. Yeah, like when you go to like Sizzler's. <laughs> And, and honestly, you get it for the dessert pizza. Like, people... It wasn't uh, Domino's. It was the Papa John's Dario pizza. That thing was awful. See, the, the dessert pizza at Godfather's, though, people are wait. It's going to be gone for sure. And people are already waiting at the buffet before it even comes out. And then it's instantly gone. Yeah, there's a, there's an entire culture to those, uh, those big buffet places that is not... It's not a healthy culture. No. <laughs> uh, like, I think back to, like... I'm just saying, there's no way that, like, any of the stuff we were grabbing at Sizzler's, like, wasn't killing us. <laughs> like, that that stuff had to be... That, that, there had to be so many diseases inside that food. Made with no love. Way. Slash diseases. When you're, when you're making it in batches, that's like enough to feed like 80 people, and you're just putting it under a heat lamp, and you're like, "Yeah, go for it, you, you filthy animals!" Like, <laughs> like there's no way that there's no way that food's okay. <laughs> they fry the diseases out. <laughs> Digital uh, says they had a buffet with a caramel apple pizza. That sounds good. I just really like caramel. I know. You can't go wrong with caramel. I thought you meant like specifically like, yeah, I know you like caramel, Chris. Oh. <laughs> Never shut up about yeah. it. Yeah, you're all, you're all just the caramel guy. <laughs> you keep go, you keep making us whenever it's your turn for family lunch. You keep picking that crepe place and you keep getting the caramel crepe. <laughs> I miss the crepe place. I, I love that crepe place. place. I, I I'm not gonna lie. I usually pick that crepe place just because it's such a big change of pace from like always getting burgers. Yeah, if you if you let Nate choose his burgers, it's burgers or mac and cheese, you know. Yeah. Usually both. <laughs> Wait, have you ever had a mac and cheese burger? Yes, that is good. Yes, I've been to Big Daddy's. <laughs> oh wait, Big Daddy's! Oh man. Do they still exist? They used to be I... near my parents' place, but I closed. There's the one in the Union Square. Big Daddy's the, the, the diner in uh, in Union Square. Yes, okay. I had like this giant breakfast sandwich where the the bun was a waffle. The theme the theme diner where the theme is just diner. Right. There's like, just like memorabilia yeah. that looks like it should be in a diner, but it's just layers yeah, like upon they, layers. They they couldn't settle on a time period or anything, so you've just got you just got like. A random collection of just stuff that you would see in like several different themed diners. It is very bright. A lot of bright colors in there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, shakes, which I did ha also had for breakfast. The shakes are so good. Uh, I like fucking 
frosted the side of it and like decorated the side of it. Yeah, yeah. The shakes at Big Daddy's are great. I'm sure it's still open. Like they were, they were like, they were like an establishment uh, there. If 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 they're if they're gone for good, I'm gonna. That's. I only go there like once every year and a half at this point. I, I went more often when I was in college, uh, but you know, then I started getting older. Right. Um, and I just don't go to Manhattan as much anymore. I just don't like Manhattan. But uh, they, uh, man, they did they did they did pretty good chicken and waffles. They, I mean, it's 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 a New York diner, right? So they have just like the largest menu you've ever seen. <laughs> wild yeah I, I i like being in like certain parts of manhattan but i'm glad i'm not going to be living there by june yeah living here <laughs> but they get anything as a gamble that's why you cashing your scratch offs there <laughs> i mean look man i I've, I've been getting i've been eating so many bodega sandwiches during quarantine i feel like you can rely on the delis pretty well oh yeah sandwiches for sure I, I guess I don't think I've ever gotten fish out here. You haven't gotten any fish out here? No. It definitely isn't where I would go for seafood, like, as a first choice, but... I was not so much of fish here. I did catfish here once at a soul food place in Brooklyn. Um, that sounds good. Yeah. It was, pretty, it, was, it was pretty good. It wasn't, like, the best catfish I've had, but it was pretty good. Come to Seattle, get a fish thrown at you? Yeah. <laughs> what? Big egg and cheese is not a gamble, it's an investment? Yeah, no, sandwiches for, at bodegas are are solid. <laughs> you can rely on the sandwiches. Every place makes the same stuff, and they all know how to make it. However, you will find the place that makes it the way that you like it, and pick your favorite bodega based off of that. But you can always reliably walk into any bodega and they'll make you bacon, egg, and cheese that is passable. True. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I usually choose my bodegas based on proximity. But, you know, you know what? You're right. There are a couple. Like, there's one that I'll walk an extra block to for certain things. So, never mind. I take that back. The one that I was close to shut down a couple months ago. Oh, dang. And then... And the, the one that I walked an extra block to get to because they were the best at making sandwiches uh, closed down like a couple weeks into the pandemic. Wow. They, they, were, they had like just opened too. And uh, I think that was why it hit them so hard was because they had literally just opened. You've been in established a fan base. Yeah. But... I thought you picked your cat. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the two by my place didn't have any cats for like most of the time I've lived out here, and then they both at the same time got brand new kittens that are <laughs> running around there. I don't understand how they make they have the cats not like run away. I don't know food. <laughs> okay, it looks cool and painted. Yeah, I'm hoping it'll look better painted, assuming I don't screw it up. Mm. Let's see. I love the idea of the volcano. What does that mean? I mean, I hope I don't screw it up. Okay. In theory, this is going to look incredible. <laughs> see. Part I'm definitely the most worried about is how there's there's a lot of actual like lava parts on this. Um, and so yeah. getting the. Uh, Getting like clean lines between the lava and the rocks that are jutting out of the lava. Seems like it'll be crucial. Let's see. 
Okay, so far I haven't screwed this up. The thing that scares me the most about the unpainted hellscape is trying to see which parts are supposed to be lava and which parts are supposed to be rock sometimes. <clears throat> oh yeah, the yeah, staring at a, a completely unpainted piece or any miniature really sometimes. I get that. I feel like the translucent yellow like trips me out a little bit more. Yeah, sure, yeah. Than than the most unpainted things with like with like being able to see the details. Try and paint it as an underdoom volcano. I'm sure that'll be much easier. <laughs> huh. Underdoom volcano that spews acid? Yeah, just purples and greens. We were uh, asking people what other pieces they would like to see us do in Hellscape. Uh, a lot of people want to see Stairway to Violence in Hellscape, which makes sense. I just yeah. want to... Base of steroid violence and ice already. Yeah, I want the steroid violence in every paint scheme. Is the thing. Yeah, or like, or the whole bridge in ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird that we just like ice just got half of the sets of pieces. People said they want the natural bridge in Hellscape too, yeah. and the elevation pieces. They want like the elevation pack to be in yeah. Hellscape. Yeah, the ner the bri the organic bridge is always good to break up a build. Uh, they're also saying that uh, what's the what's the thing called the the ice piece with the big glowy crystal in it? Which one? The pedestal ice piece that has like uh, the, the runic glowy column. LED in the middle of it. Was that the runic column? Runic column, yeah. People are saying they want that in, in Hellscape. Huh. When we'll call it the crystal. I guess the crystal needs to be clear since it's a remote LED. But yeah, that could be cool. It like, sits on top of like the, the teapot, the pedestal of paint. That's another one of those pieces that I think would be cool in every color. The volcano, but in ice. Mm hmm Ooh. Yeah, an ice volcano would actually be kind of sick. Yeah. Did the Hellscape stairway have the LEDs embedded inside rather than sockets? That'd be cool. I don't... So the thing is, I don't think we'd be... Able to do, that would involve making a different mold. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's completely sculpted at that point. Yeah. Need lava sharks, too. Lava sharks, I'm down for this. I feel like lava sharks. Do a Kickstarter that's only lava sharks? Like a lava sh you can make a lava shark castle, the lava shark. I feel like a lava shark is basically just the, Le the Levasioth from mm -hmm. uh, Monster Hunter World. Feel that just comes out in different things, other things as well. I want us to make penguins. <laughs> <laughs> you paint a few penguins and you want them everywhere, huh? We need Gorbonite penguins. We need. I, a want pe we need I, can, I want penguins I can throw across the room without having them break. <laughs> oh sure. We need pangolins. Yes. Penguin, penguins? Yeah. Pe Penguin v. Pangolins. Starter set. Yes. <laughs> bones has a set. Wait, aren't the Bones penguins the ones you have? Yes. Some of the first minis I ever painted were the uh, Reaper Bones penguins. Mace says acid penguins. 
<laughs> yes. Penguins in an Underdoom scheme? Underdoom penguins, yes. Hello, Silver Lady. I feel like the I feel like Underdoom is uh or the Underdark, I guess. It's basically just the Australia of D D. <laughs> they just have all of our they have all of our creatures, but just bigger and scarier and weirder. Yeah. Just give it the Evangelion paint scheme and you call it Underdoom. Yes! Oh, Evangelion. Every time I see it, just, I'm just like, okay, just... Every time I see it, I, the, 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 I the guess that's the first thought on it. The fact that Ava01 just has an Underdoom paint scheme. <laughs> and then there's a... There's an ice one as well, and then there's a... No, I guess a lot. Did you realize uh, Barney has an Underdoom paint scheme? Barney is from... Ah. The <laughs> I I just saw this screenshot of a uh, a Resident Evil game where they modded all the zombies to be Barney. That's excellent. <laughs> have you ever seen the speaking of mods for games? Have you ever seen the Skyrim mod where they replace all the dragons with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine? Yes. Oh, what I was yeah. about to say is pull it up on that. Somebody did a Resident Evil Eight mod where they replaced Dimitrescu's face with Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes. <laughs> um. So, that's still an ongoing thing. Hey, Band of Badgers, thank you for the raid. Hello, Band of Badgers. Hello. Welcome to the Underdoom, mate. <laughs> that wasn't meant for you guys. That was We were talking about how Barney, the dinosaur, has an Underdoom paint scheme. Or no, we were talking about... Who was it we were saying? No, we were we saying that, say that, that but Underdark... We... That's a response. We were saying that the Underdark is the Australia of D&D. <laughs> regular monsters, or regular you know animals, bigger and scary. So somebody in chat said that, and then I read it. I didn't think about the context. It's gotta be annoying, right? Just like dealing with the amount of Americans who think it's very funny for them to do like a bad British accent in front of British people. Were you muted? Oh, were you, were you doing something? Sorry if there's construction behind, like, going on me. I mean, I'll try to mute when that's happening, but it usually does not happen at this time of day, so. It's all good. Yeah, it's kind of late for construction to be happening yeah. in a building where people are paying rent to live and sleep. Yeah. They, like... They hadn't done it this way before, but like they also do it on the weekends, so I people next door saw it. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Why would you do that to the big lady? Wanna make an underdoom propaganda video? Uh kinda. Let's get this volcano going. I'm very excited to have this volcano painted up, actually. Then I can paint my fogger. And I can put that under the volcano. Let's see. Hamster. Huh? Did you know that there's new episodes of Mythic Quest? No! Yeah. Is there a there new season? Yeah, two episodes in the new season so far. The next uh, third episode comes out tomorrow. No way! They also added another special episode that is technically from the first season. Oh. That they added a little bit before the second season started. Uh, so it's kind of like the quarantine episode, and that's like a, it's you know it's a special episode. Yeah. But uh, it's them coming back from quarantine basically. Because then... I I remember one of the last episodes they were all on like Zoom calls. Yeah, so that's a that's a special episode they made. Oh, that's it. Okay. Like after the season was over, they did that as like a special episode. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, man, yeah. I, I'm gonna watch those right after this. Then, dang. Yeah. You started Ted Lasso on Chris's account, so I saw the last episode first. Wait, you watched? You watched Ted Lasso? You watched the, the you watched the last episode of Ted Lasso first? Why? 
Wait, why didn't what? you just stop it? <laughs> if it... <laughs> yeah, at what point? What the heck? At some point you had to have realized. <laughs> hey, Nerbatri. Yeah, I heard about the CDC announcement. Yeah, no, yeah. British accents aren't bad. It's just, man, uh, a, a lot of Americans really do like to repeat the same British accent jokes over and over again. And I guess actually, it's like our go-to accent for anything fantasy too. Yeah. Well, I guess. Uh... It's like people's like go-to like role-play accent when they're playing D and D is uh, something vaguely British. Yeah. But I guess there's a lot of like the the traditional fantasy tropes are like based in that part of the world yeah, too, kind of right. And stuff. What's that? I'm talking like Arthurian legend and stuff. Yeah. 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 It's just funny to me. We're like, man, you're telling me that in Aragon land, they all talk like <laughs> they do in Harry Potter land? <laughs> like, and the same way they talk in Lord of the Rings and... Uh... Same way they talk. <laughs> I just want to, yeah, I just want to see like a fantasy, I just want to see like a fantasy show come out and they've all just got like German accents. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Or just some accent that like doesn't actually authentically exist in our uh, in our world. That'd I recently fun. saw uh, some dwarfs or for for Relic Blade, he made some dwarfs that are based on they're inspired by like samurai. Huh. So that was definitely unique. That was like a thing that they've been like branding hobgoblins in Five E as being kind of samurai inspired. Oh, really? Right? I think. I thought that's what the art has been like for them lately. That'd be cool. Yes, Topulus, I promise. I have to move. When I safely get everything set up, I will finally paint Echoes of Camelot. I knew it as soon as you said Arthurian legend, Topulus, that I was going to get some, some guff for that. I'm so glad I didn't go in on that Kickstarter. God. Those models, are so, they're beautiful, but they are so expensive, and I would not have anything to use them in. No, and and I, I only got the, the big ones. So they're just like you display. only got the big ones. Yeah, so I didn't get the miniatures to, to game with. I just got the display figures. And I started being a good influence on myself. I said, hey, let me just pick out a couple favorites. These are pricey. Then I got to the pledge manager. Oh. And I said, I can't pass any of these up. So, yeah, that was... You went uh, all in on that? Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> you went all in on that. That, 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 yeah. was, that was the one where I was like, okay, I got to pump the brakes a little bit <laughs> after that. I mean, to be fair, that's, that's going to be me with the Monster Hunter Kickstarter. As soon as the Pledge Vendor opens up, I'm grabbing everything I didn't get. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Just yesterday... Just yesterday, I shipped off my my first big Kickstarter I did, which was a uh, Bloodborne, Cool Mini or Nots Bloodborne game, and I I love I would love to have Bloodborne miniatures, but I had a stack of boxes, you know, almost as tall as me, and I sold it on eBay. I said, look, I don't want to move these, and I'm I still haven't opened it up in like a year, so <laughs> I finally like gave something up in my pile of shame. I feel like the Bloodborne minis too are so specific. Yeah. I just love the aesthetic of the game, but, but you know, I'm never going to... It's kind of like the Cursed City thing I passed up on Warhammer Quest. Because it's like, the minis are cool, but then I would have this game, Components, that I'm, I don't really have any interest in. So that's kind of where I was at with Bloodborne. Wait, is the Montana still, still going on? Hmm? Is the Monster Hunter... Kickstarter still going on? No. Okay. That's been done for a bit, but when the pledge manager opens up, I'm going to grab everything that I didn't get. I decided to... I decided to split up my, my payments, basically. I did, like, half of it in the Kickstarter. And then I'm going to do the other half in pledge manager. Just so that I'm not <laughs> spending it all at once. Yeah, I feel that. That's I honestly happened in most Kickstarters where... I was like, I'll just get, I'll just get some stuff in the beginning. As soon as the pledge manager comes around, 
I'm still looking at the at the Durgan uh, pledge manager. The Elves of Venith thing. Oh, nice. I think I'm going to get at least a couple things from there, but I don't know what. But I'm looking at it and I'm like, I like a lot of these. But I don't know. They're such a strong aesthetic that I'm like, I don't know that I can use them along with other minis that I have. You know, I feel like I would have to use them just with themselves, basically. Yeah, I feel that. Especially now, it's like a lot of the miniatures are kind of getting bigger and, and people are... The technology is getting better, so they're they're making really unique stuff, which is cool. But you're right; if you're trying to like mix stuff, it sometimes looks out of place. Yeah. Are they taking late pledges for uh, Monster Hunter? I've just been waiting for the pledge manager to open for that one. I am worried. I mean, I guess I have like a year and a half to figure out how I'm going to store it. So, you know. I've got all that Bard Song stuff coming too. I forgot about that. Let's see. Yeah, I still. I got to ship out a big box of terrain to my friend because. First of all, when I go and visit him one of these days, I'll end up playing with it anyway. But I'm like, why am I buying terrain? I end up with more Dwarven Forge every year. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't need this. <laughs> That's completely valid. I mean, the biggest thing is that my the place is a little smaller than what I have that I'm moving to. So I have to get rid of some stuff. But So I, I, if I was staying here, I probably would still have forgotten about it and keep accumulating stuff. But... It's a good thing that you're just replacing everything with paintball. Um. <laughs> God. Yeah, I, I, you know, I just, I, I can't pick affordable hobbies. I can only pick the most expensive ones. I'm not sure that affordable hobbies exist. I think it's the point. I think it's how the hobby yeah. ecosystem works. That's uh, true. That's true. Yeah. They need it to be a money sink. Right. I don't. I don't think. There, I don't think anybody. I don't think I've heard anybody be like, "Yeah, my hobbies are this and this." I just like that it's not very expensive. But there are hobbies that, like, the point of entry is definitely smaller. Yeah, that is true. I mean, yeah, like there's definitely like economies of scale. Like there, there are things that are much more expensive than others. Actually, you know what it is is a lot of the hobbies I pick, the point of entry is really, really, really high, but you can coast on that for a really long time. So it's kind of like a one-time purchase. Like, if you if you buy a Magic deck, you know, if you're playing in tournaments and you get, like, a, even a mid-range, like, a mid-budget tournament deck, it's going to cost you a lot of money, but then you can play that for as long as you want, like, years. Uh, Warhammer Army, same thing. Costs a lot of money to get, like, 2,000 points. But when does you have magic, it, you have it. Does Magic make the old cards obsolete when they make new sets? In in some formats, yeah. But there are also s formats that are like most of the cards ever. Because I know that was the thing that upset me about Yu-Gi-Oh. Because I was in Yu-Gi-Oh when I was younger. There is and the... I, yeah. Every time they basically just came up with a new OP thing where it's like, the old stuff just can't do anything to the new cards. That does happen in Standard. Uh, so... You know, not only do the new sets, like, something tops the old set and knocks some of your staple cards out, but eventually, after, like, a year and a half, the sets all rotate, and they're illegal. And the next rotation is what's yeah. legal. But I normally played the sort of, uh, well, I played, like, modern. So, like, you know, the past 20 years of cards yeah. is legal. What makes it modern? Well, they just called it modern. So basically, the, basically there was like the format that you were talking about of like the newest cards, and then there was everything else. And so they made one that was in between and called it modern. It's like not the standard. They call it the standard. It's not the new stuff, but it's not the old legacy stuff. And so it's modern. <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Yeah. I'm just going to take your word for it. Yep. 
now there's Pioneer too, but I haven't played in years, so I'm not even in the loop on that really. I thought it was just like regular drafts and commander. I that's basically all I play <laughs> now. <laughs> Because I don't want to, like, here's the thing. When I was up on Standard and then I was up on Modern and playing tournaments hardcore, that was fun. But it's, it, it's kind of like the pizza talk. It's like a different game, right? It's like you're playing the meta game. Everyone knows the top deck. So when you play your first card, they know what deck you're playing and you know what deck they're playing. And so, you know, you kind of know the matchups and you learn the rock, paper, scissors. But I, yeah. I, uh, I, I didn't like keeping up with it financially. And so now I just like drafts. Which is actually considered one of the most skill intensive formats because you don't have your set list of like you just jam all your OP cards together in your colors. Uh, it's a little takes a little more skill to like not only put to the deck together but then navigate it. You gotta but, be able to be think on your feet. Yeah, but it's also way cheaper. You can go walk in on a Friday and pay your twelve or fifteen bucks or whatever, and uh, you're you're on the same playing field as everyone else for that night. <laughs> I would like to do drafts at least once. Well, we'll probably have a draft again once people come back to the office. We have so many boxes there. Yeah, Nate has so many boxes of Magic yeah. Art. He he gets one for like every set since I started working there. Yeah. And we used to draft it all the time, but now we haven't been in the office for so long. But it looks like he's still gotten cards. So I think he has sets all the way from the, the last Theros to now, plus like other sets as well. Yeah. That man's got like five packages a day. Oh, right. Sealed is better than draft. I only play sealed typically in the pre-releases, which are fun because the cards are brand new and everyone's playing with them for the first time and it's a little more laid back. But I, I don't think I've like played a sealed event. What's sealed? So draft is when like yeah, everyone opens their pack and you take one card and pass them, right? Sealed is just like you're handed six booster packs and that's your pool. You're not passing. You just whatever you open up is your your pool. Wait, and then, so you might just wind up with a deck that just like has all five colors in it and stuff. I've seen people play almost five colors in a sealed deck. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, yeah. Basically, you'll have a. You don't typically end up with like five colors since yeah. you can probably do two or even one because let's see, you need about twenty three cards playable and. With a sealed, each one's 15 cards, so you get 90? Is it 90 cards to choose from? So yeah, you'll be able to, you have a lot of leeway. But. Right, yeah, like you, you're, you're by no means going to end up playing with all those cards, but out of your pool, like what is the most optimal deck? Okay, so yeah. you just get to build a deck. You don't just literally open the no, pack. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, you build the deck from that pool, yeah. Okay. And so, so you kind of see like what's my power level looking like in this color, or this I color. Was really like, uh, all right, here's six booster packs. Just open them and shuffle, shuffle them together, and that's your deck. Like, no. Chris, you played when we did a. Uh, did you play when we did the uh, Kaldheim <laughs> stuff? The Viking stuff? I've never played Magic with you guys. Oh, really? Mm mm. Huh. Okay. It's always yeah, not going to be available when it's going on. Which usually is on purpose, but for magic it hasn't been. <laughs> I, I missed what you said first. It's all good. Just introvert jokes. Yeah, I feel that. The new Stormcast are looking good. Yeah, the Primera Stormcast. <laughs> modern. Oh, okay. Yeah, DMN makes a good point. So the cutoff for modern was they changed the card frames. They kind of, like, updated the look of the card border. And so that it was the modern border that was, like, became the the branding, you know, signature. So anything that has that border, you can play. Right, right. Like, that's the cutoff, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, kind of. It's definitely it's How to win in modern play Tron? That's it. Yeah, it's Tron will never die. Tron is a Tron is a deck that that plays. It just plays these special lands where when you assemble the Tron, you assemble a collection of a few lands. They start making more mana per land, and so it's just like trying to assemble Tron. They call it, and then you can play really big stuff. Yeah. I 
just remember the one time I like I only played modern a couple of times and one time I was able to shut it shut it down with the blue moon so I mean red blood moon so oh that's <laughs> right yeah. yeah blood moon man I love Zelda <laughs> blood moon rises once again Never to tournaments, just house rules. One of the favorite, my favorite casual uh, games I played was Emperor, where you're in a you're in a, a circle of like six people and there's two emperors. It's three v three, and so you, the goal is to kill the emperor, but you have to kill the person next to you to get to the emperor. <laughs> oh, I see. That's cool. Yeah. Huh. I like thinking about so, all these like uh, casual made formats that I'll never get to play. Some really interesting ones out there. Like that. Well, yeah, Commander just started as a... The judges at tournaments started making up some casual format. Now it's, like, super official. Wait, so Commander's, like, an official thing? Like, they, do they have Commander tournaments? They do. It's mostly that they pump out official Commander product every year now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, the thing I... The thing I lent you, the deck I lent you was a pre-constructed one. That, that's, an official, that's an official commander deck that they actually yeah. made playing commander? Yeah. Oh, I thought you put it together. No, they're just... There's some, there's like, some of them were like, really cheap, but some of them are good. Is giving somebody a magic deck that you've made for them, like, the nerd equivalent of making somebody a mixtape? <laughs> I never thought of it that way, but that does that. I think that plays. Yeah, I guess. I made. I made this for you. I always thought you were a green white. <laughs> Romantic. It is. Because you're an angel. Oh. And also because, also because you like to suddenly grow five times in size and rage. <laughs> And trample. Right. <laughs> you just give someone a goblin deck and it really sh shows what you think of them. You're an angel, but I also want you to trample me. <laughs> okay. Wait, what All if right. you give them a control oh. deck? What does that say? You're controlling. <laughs> <laughs> what if you give them like one of those sacrifice decks? <laughs> You're my favorite murderer. <laughs> Here you go, death and taxes. Yeah. Man, I will say one of my best magic experiences, which was more the community in my local scene in my hometown, because all, all, all these games really, I mean, even D and D, like totally depends on the group and the scene, right? Absolutely. Uh, and so the first time I ever played at list the local star tournament, I was really young, and so I poured over my collection and like thought super hard about this deck, having never played tournaments and of course eventually when i took it seriously i learned there's like the sort of a the top tier decks the the next tier decks there's like those levels but i was just trying to whatever i had collected i i put something together and so my first game my first match when they saw what i was playing they totally like knew that that's what i did i just like had random cards and so all the players in the store gave me cards and made my first tournament deck and it wasn't like a super expensive deck but it was just like a mono red like really fast creatures and burn which will win games it, it won me games and yeah. i played with that forever but they all just like they, they were like here let me i think i have a few of these and they're like hey man do you have like a couple of this card they're like oh yeah for sure yeah this guy's new we're just trying to make this like quick mono red thing and it it was just like so cool that they did that for me that really cool. as a new player, and then I I would show up every week and see those guys and play the deck and yeah it was neat. It is oh, really fascinating. It is really fascinating how cults work. <laughs> yeah. They suckered you in, man. They did. <laughs> they did. Did you do the same for new players, Hamster? Or did you just take the free stuff and then not get back to the community? <laughs> I've de I've definitely done that for uh, for new players in my scene. Or like if people are trying to trade, 
you know, I'll, I'll almost always, like, if they want a card, I'll make sure they get the card. I'm not going to try to, like, get every you'll, inch you'll of take, value. You'll take, a, you'll take a bad trade? Yeah, yeah. You're going to give them false false expectations of what a card's <laughs> worth is? I mean, I guess it's not more that, more like you'll take cards that you don't really need. Is that what you Yeah, mean? yeah, basically. Yeah, like, I, stuff like that. I've done that a couple times. And sometimes if there's, like, a young kid at a draft, like, nowadays, I don't necessarily, like, need to keep the cards. Like, I'm not building decks and stuff, so I'll just give them to a kid that's there playing or something, and they can take them home. I need to get an extremely goofy movie on DVD. <laughs> so I need Nate to watch that with his kids, because... They were freaked out by how 90s the original Goofy movie was. Wait, they watched it? They watched it this last weekend. And they were freaked out? Well, so they were freaked out by the beginning because, I, you know, there's, like, the, the like, nightmare sequence in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there was that nightmare sequence in the beginning, and he was, like, worried. It's like, oh, man. Oh, what is this? The, you know, the buck teeth start coming in and all that. Um, but, like, you know... Uh, it's a it's a it's a pretty '90s movie, right? Uh, and so there there's a lot of times where they had to stop and just like explain like what the TV cart was. It, oh, it, it, sure. Because they're like, how come there's a TV on this big box? And they're like, no, the box is the TV. It's like <laughs> just like all that stuff. What? And, he, and, he's, and he's like, yeah, it's just, you know, it's it's definitely a product of its time. Like, wow. Uh, there's a lot of stuff they didn't recognize there. And they're like, man. If you think that movie was a product of its time, let me tell you about its sequel, which is based on the X Games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh... like the like the sequel is, man. It's got it's got it's got disco. It's got the X Games in it. <laughs> like, but now yeah, look, looking back at it, I'm like, yeah, no, I could totally see it. He's wearing like the the, the baggy shorts, and they've all got like yeah, kind of neon colored, like solid color. Uh, tops and everything. Right. Like it's it was, it's definitely. It reminds me of when I got so they started releasing Boy Meets World on DVD. Like, God, like nine years ago, ten years ago, something like that. And so that show was like I, I loved that show as a kid. So they started coming out on DVD, and I started getting them. Uh, watching the first episode the series ever made, and Corey comes like the opening shot. Corey comes running down the stairs, in like a neon pink like baggy sweatshirt <laughs> and like uh bright orange short shorts like that's like the that's the first thing you see of Corey, and i was just immediately floored <laughs> I was like, oh yeah yeah no this was this is an extremely 90s show yeah, yeah. especially when it started <laughs> like so it, was, it was a different time Sequel's a perfect sequel. You know, Extremely Goofy Movie is actually really, really good. Rename Stream Shot for Shot Read of Extremely Goofy Movie. That would actually be really fun. <laughs> to do a table read of, uh, of the Goofy yes. Movie. Yes. Dramatic read of the Goofy Movie. Oh, that'd be great. Well, gorge. Who would be cast as... Hmm. I'd probably be Max. I identify with Max a great deal. So Mace has seen Extremely Goofy Movie, but hasn't seen the original, apparently. I haven't seen the original. I haven't seen the Extremely Goofy Movie we either. have a Team Goofy Movie night, is what it sounds like. That's what I'm hearing from, from, you, and, from you and Mace, Toby. I'm down. I had definitely... What? See an extremely goofy movie more than the original. I don't know why. It does Polly Shore. It does have Polly Shore. I'll watch it. Bring on the goofy movie night. Yes, Team Goofy Movie Night. Well, well, I guess we don't. Have <laughs> we'll need to get a new TV, and then, or I guess we can use the one in the Barbican. No, I'm going to fall off again. We got to go to somebody's house. I don't have a house. We got to go to somebody's apartment. I don't have an apartment. What do you live in? He's under a bridge right now, like all trolls. Oh, that's—they're currently building the bridge. That's the construction. Yeah. 
It, it's being upgraded from a wooden bridge to a drawbridge. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it basically is like a sunroof for me. Oh, Tyvins has a point. We can do it in Mesa's castle. Oh, yeah. If we all just hang out in Mesa's castle and watch a Goofy movie. <laughs> Bro. Let's hey. do it. Hey, Rabbit Burner. Hi, Rabbit. Hey, rabbit. 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 Oh, man. I want to do Rabbit and Costello now. <laughs> what? Are you not familiar with Rabbit and Costello? Oh, yeah. yeah. I missed but, 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 but it's before. Rabbit and Costello? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I live a life of moderate luxury. <laughs> you have a That's castle under your life. couch? Rabbit was talking about the castle. It's true. As soon as we as soon as we bring up the castle, Rabbit shows up. <laughs> Remember when we were letting people uh, spend channel points to get their name on a brick? Oh, yeah. Of uh, Mesa's castle. Oh, yeah. She abandoned that castle project real quick. <laughs> people deserve better, Mace. <laughs> Dang. That's right, I'm calling you out. <laughs> Getting the white to apply in an even coat is difficult. It's a runny white. It's a very runny white, and there's a lot of little... There's a lot of little lines in here that the white likes to just conveniently skip over. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. I've got, I got most of it based now. Based. Put stuff in there. Yeah, I just gotta cover all the little, all the little holes now. Be good. Let's go through pictures of our Titan destroying one. Looking good. Thank you. This is the part where it doesn't look good yet. <laughs> but it will. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way the, the other Hellscape pieces I've done so far have been. I haven't done any of the walls yet. I'm kind of scared of doing the walls because then I got to do the gradual shift to cavern. Although I might just paint mine to be black all the way up. I don't know. Uh, and on the anvil last night, Nate was saying he kind of regrets us making the decision to, like, uh, have them fade back into Cavern's paint at the top of the walls in Hellscape. Oh, really? Yeah, he says it makes, like, transitions hard. I really like the effect, but I understand, like, especially we're talking about, like, if we want to work in, like, elevation pieces, like, it kind of complicates... The, the nature of those paint jobs and all that. I don't entirely get it. I'm not one of the creatives, but it seems to make sense to me. Honestly, Hellscape was one of those. And we've, we've uh, changed a lot of this now, but if it wasn't on my desk, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> Huh. Well, you guys are still, like, trying to, you know, you still had all your follow-up work from Caverns Deep you were doing and all that. Yeah. And then it's like, hey, you want to run out of the Kickstarter? <laughs> Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Who has been playing Pokemon Snap? I haven't gotten it yet. I haven't gotten it, but I. Yeah. I want to play. It. I'm waiting to play it with Chelsea. Is the thing. Oh sure. 
She's on a Pokemon kick lately. And so she didn't know Pokemon Snap existed as a thing. She never knew about the original game or anything. I never heard the original. And so I sent her the trailer for the new one while I was on a call with her and just watched her reactions to watching the, the, the trailer for new Pokemon Snap. And yeah, she's 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 really gonna like it. Nice. Uh, so she's playing she's playing Shield right now. But I think when she's done with that, I'm going to get Snap and we will play that. I just like throwing apples at their faces until they get mad. So you would love the original. Yeah, the original Pokemon Snap. It's not a long game, but it everything that's there is 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 good. It's fun the whole way through. Like it's 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 only a couple hours, but like it's a very good couple hours. I'd much rather a game be consistently fun for three hours than be good for a couple hours and then a chore for another twenty hours. You know. Hey, man. I'd rather replay a solid yeah. game multiple times. What? Hmm? Yeah? Pokemon Snap is a very easy game to replay, actually. They re-released original on, like, uh... Something, right? I think they put it... On the virtual console? Virtual um, console? On the Wii U, yeah. Oh, okay. I think they've put it on the Switch, because they haven't done... I don't think they've done 64 games on the Switch. When are they going to put Wii U games on any virtual console? What's that? When are they going to put GameCube games on any of the virtual consoles? They literally said that was the plan on the Wii U. They were like, yeah, we're going to get around to doing GameCube games. And then they never did, and then well, they got rid of the console. Yeah. I just want to reliably play uh, Kirby Air Ride again. <laughs> and Kirby Air Ride is good. I'll just bring I want them to make another Kirby Air Ride so that they can expand it and put more game there. Because the like the only downside to Air Ride is yeah. that there's a lot of stuff in it. Yeah. But like again, like what's there is very fun. Yeah. I was really just dis- Remember the Smash Rosalina trailer? Yes. That, the beginning of that made me think we're getting a uh, career or a sequel. I'm not so mad. <laughs> was all the stars? No, because it was Kirby and it was flying on the warp star and it was playing Kirby Air Ride music. Yeah. And then it, I thought it was going to be Kirby and uh, Mario Kart, but no. We got Rosalina and said thanks. I mean, who knows? They They just made a new Pokemon Snap. And it's selling like gangbusters, and it's getting extremely good reviews, and everybody seems happy with it. So I think they're gonna be more open to uh, doing remakes, uh, or not remakes, but like continuing some of those series again that have been kind of dead for a while. Yeah, if they make that, I can just die happy. Just make sure someone killed me right after that, and I'll be good. I need anything else in life. That's my favorite game ever. May as much as get a Switch. May as get a Switch. <laughs> We're waiting until E3 to see if they announce a Switch Pro or something, I guess. But They think we're we'll running back for like five years. It's not happening. We'll see. It's, it's a round time for like a new console generation. And I mean, it is happening, you know, the PS5 is happening and all that. So it is weird though. Like the Switch is like a really weird place. Cause like, how do you. Switch happened because, because the Wii U's lifespan was like two years. The Wii U's lifespan actually wasn't that much shorter than usual. It just, man, it, it got, it got, it got, it got a rough, uh, it really got the short end of the stick. The Wii U was a better console than it got credit for. They just, it just didn't get. It's not that it was a bad console. They just didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. 
I was talking to a, uh, Miles today, but it's like, yeah, you know, they had like crazy good ideas with a uh, Nintendo Land and everything else. They just didn't know how to use it. Mainly with third party stuff. The problem was that it was so different that third party developers, in order to justify porting something, they basically had to like completely remake the game to make it work with the, the two screen thing. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, they're just like, I don't see why we would port it. And so it led to like, a lot of things either not getting ported or getting ported in really awkward ways where people didn't really want them. Like third, like third party support was not great for the Wii U. That was, that was like the biggest problem, I think. Um, but there's like a genuinely like a lot of really solid, almost every first party Nintendo game on the Wii U was actually really solid. Like, I don't know. But like on the Switch, it's like, how do you, you have to do things that look like the Switch going forward, right? Like you can't, now that you've done the Switch, you can't just turn around and now make a console that's just a regular console again. Like they've got- Nintendo you know, just like does whatever they want. And then they, they like, you thought that way, people thought that way about the Wii, people thought that way about the DS, not the 3DS, but... Well, the thing is that the Switch kind of adopts all the stuff that those things did. The, yeah. Like, the only thing Nintendo has done that... Well, okay, so there's two things Nintendo has done that aren't currently done by the Switch. Uh, virtual reality. Because Virtual Boy didn't do well. And then the two, oh, the oh, like, was that? What are you talking about? Okay, great. Have you ever tried a virtual play? No. I have one. It's awful. I've never <laughs> been in a room with virtual world before. It's just. I've never tried online dating. <laughs> um... But it had the card. Oh, I guess it does. Yeah, the... it has like the. That's not really VR though, like the the, the cardboard thing they did with like, I think it was part of La, La, Nintendo Labo. That's not really VR. Yeah, just put the switch to your face. Yeah, I mean, for what they could get away with, I mean, for what they could do with cardboard make uh, peripherals. It was cool. I didn't. I never used it, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's it never replaced actual VR. It's yeah, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's not yeah, it's it's not it's not VR. They kind of just dropped all the. I remember for a while they were trying to support it, like getting some games, a VR quote unquote VR experience, and then all of a sudden they just stopped. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know, and it, it's it's unfortunate because there there's some really cool things that the Wii U could do that uh, that the Switch can't, just because there was value in having two screens. But you know, for various reasons, that's not what we've got anymore. And uh, they're doing really cool stuff with the Switch. That's cool. And I like it. <laughs> But man, Nintendo Land is the best party games ever made. You know? Yeah. Good shit. Nintendo Land very good. Which one did you like the most in it? <sighs> the Luigi's Mansion one was like that was really, really fun. Good. I love that thing. I love that in the Mario one. Yeah. Um, the Animal Crossing one was pretty fun with friends. Out of the co-op ones, I think I liked Metroid more than Zelda, but like not by much. Metroid and Zelda were like the two. I think Pikmin was definitely the weakest out of the co-op ones. Um, I don't remember the Pikmin one. It was... I don't remember the Zelda one. I remember the Metroid one a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's, I think that kind of says it all. Cat, don't you dare. Hey, stop it. Come on. This 
cat's just like on a just on a mission to make me lose my security deposit. <laughs> Within a month of having dunk here, like I used to have the his water dispenser, like near the kitchen, and then we have wood floor there. But like he likes to splash the water and make the bubbles go up. So within a month, like he splashed enough that the floorboards warped. Oh my god! Yeah, so I have to put it in the bathroom where it's tiled. But I don't know if it's that the building is made that way or that he shouldn't have done that. But yeah. <clears throat> Nintendo Store and Rockefeller Center is actually worth visiting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Nintendo Store is actually really good. I used to go there all the time when there was a, a street pass sort of thing. Yeah, back when they did like 3DS stuff. I went to the Smash 4 launch event there. Yeah. Um, did I get anything else day one, day one there? <laughs> I, I went once when I was called one of the uh, Mario and Luigi games came out, the, the, the one where Luigi's sleeping. Dream Team. Yeah, and they gave us uh, pillowcases. Huh. That's fun, funny. That's really cute. They gave us uh, they gave us like belts for the Smash Bros. one. Yeah, I had that one. Uh, oh man, we were there. We were there at the same time. I know, didn't... right? I... We just didn't know each other existed. Why didn't you say anything? I'm sorry, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know I didn't know you yet. I take it personally. Mm. I was there for the Smash Ultimate one as well. I remember going there for the night before uh, Brawl came out, and then Reggie was there. Yeah. Wow. Dude, you know, being at Nintendo anymore is wild. What? Oh, yeah. I miss the, I miss the direct skits. Whatever happens, like, all the directs are really boring now. Uh, it kind of feels like... I mean, just timing-wise, it makes it seem like Iwata was, like, a really big pushing force behind him, you know? Yeah. Whatever happened to Bill Trinan? He's still around. Yeah, he just he used to be funny. He's gone. He doesn't get talked anymore, but he's, he's still around. He's still a very good follow on Twitter. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Uh, Bill! Bill! Reggie, king of memes. Yeah, they, uh... Bye, Mace. Bye, Mace. I heard fire patrol. Switch light when you be remote. Nice. <clears throat> Chelsea's only got the switch light. I've never used one of them. I got my switch on launch day. Yes, I am. With Breath of the Wild, and it changed my life. I think it is one of my favorite video game like launches of all time, if I'm being real. It's one of the most memorable ones for me. Which one? The Switch? The Switch with Breath of the Wild. I'm trying to remember what I did. I think I just got uh, it at my local GameStop. I had it delivered. I uh, pre-ordered it as early as I could. I remember lining up for the Wii. Oh man. I've never lined up for a console. I only did, like, I was, like, maybe 15 or something then, and, like, we didn't line up, like, overnight. I, like, uh, I lined up for a, what's called, Pokemon X and Y, though, at a Nintendo World, and, you know, Rockefeller Center, the line went all the way around Rock Rockefeller Center. Yeah, dude, those lines get crazy. Like, for, uh, yeah, for Smash, like, that, that line was super long. Yeah. For Smash 4. I remember for Ultimate, I bought, like, 
like I down I got it digitally, but I was lining up with friends. So I remember playing it when they were still like waiting in line to get into the store. <laughs> oh, you know what? I did do midnight releases. Back home, I went to the midnight release of Super Smash Brothers Brawl with my uh, with some of my friends back home in high school. Yeah, I remember doing a yeah. Uh, I did midnight for that one as well, but I remember they had a, like a little demo. You can play a little bit before, or it was a tournament or something like that. Yeah, they that, they, they had people play. Went home and played a uh, melee at six four the melee again and then got a uh, I got uh brawl. Yeah, that. they had playing they had some people playing brawl. Like when you were getting in line they were like letting you go and go and play like after you got your after you got your copy or whatever. Uh they, they had like a Wii set up for people to, to play on. And so people were like watching and we we were in line and a guy won and he took his shirt off and pointed at his back and he had a Triforce tattoo on his back. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing his link, of course. I remember, yeah, I remember going to like back in early days of high school. At one point, I was doing a school project. Uh, I went, sorry, I went to the library near uh, Nintendo World. Uh, I mean, after the library, I was like, ah, I'll go. It was right before the weekend, and I went. So I dropped by there afterwards, and apparently, it was like the first day they were letting people play the Wii. So I lined up, and then like I didn't realize people who you entered a raffle when entering the store, and I walked out with a DS Lite that I won. Ha, nice. When I was in college, I actually spent a good amount of my time going to the Nintendo store to play demos there. Cause like I didn't, I didn't actually like have money to be buying games or anything during college, so I would go and play them. Uh, I would go play them at the store just to like Friends. see what was happening. There's that one. What do I do with this lid? Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> All these runes, uh... All these runes sure are a, sure are a challenge. So get me ready for the Wildlands runes. Yeah! I already want to do alternate paint schemes for my runes. Same. We were talking about that on the Discord a bit ago. Um, saying like I really want to do sandstone. Yeah. Uh, that is uh. Originally, when we first started, we were trying a sandstone look. Really. But uh, yeah, but you know, the idea was. They got to fit in the forest, and so a more earthy color didn't really stick out. And he was like, you know, pushing the elven sort of thing that, that we were going for. And so I love how they turned out, uh, but it definitely started in that sort of traditional, like, ivory or sandy tone. Were the sculpts different then, or was it just... No, no, it was the same. Hmm. Yeah. Hard to imagine now with seeing how they turned out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I definitely thought sandstone was like a very different thing than what you guys were considering. Yeah, you know, what it wound up as is very decidedly not sandstone. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was part of it too. It's just like. Uh, you know, we just we're like, what what's we're, what's like the furthest we can go with like some of these notes? Like, just take it up to eleven. Hmm. 
Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And the the big thing too is like the tough thing with the ruins was uh, there's a lot of detail like uh, on the faces of everything, but most of it this is for like all the terrain, but most of it seems kind of from above, right? Like you're looking down at it. So you had to incorporate that as well with like it has to be something that looks cool when you're staring at it and when you're at like playing level, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. So also get to think these things through when I make them. It's not just about making stuff that looks cool. It's about making it function. Oh yeah. That's been the trick about working here, man. It's like, I could be an, I could be a master hobby painter, but, uh, Learning to do Dwarven Forge is a different beast. <laughs> yeah, you gotta learn to take playability into account. Just all the manufacturing stuff and... Fun challenge. Hello, C. Golden. Oh, Rabbit wants to try some, uh, like, gray granite ruins to go along with castles. That'd be cool. Not surprised, but excited to see what happens. Hector, did you get a 3D printer? <laughs> no. I bought paintball gun instead. <laughs> oh, you got a 3D painter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is definitely 3D. Yep. That paintball gun is aggressively in the real world. <laughs> and I have some 3D welts to prove it. Yeah, how have the game been going? You know, it's kick, it, it, it's kicking my butt, but I I like it for that. Like the main the main thing is my conditioning is crap. <laughs> you know, from being in quarantine. So Yeah, I guess that's that. the main thing to kick my butt. But as far as like I guess the nice thing is everybody's wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are those are uh, masks. That, you know what? They've been doing the mask thing for a while, honestly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. was really ahead of the curve. <laughs> Almost makes you wonder if they knew something. Yeah, yeah. definitely knew something. Commerce says, see those welts at onlyhamster.com? <laughs> yeah, welt picks. It will get you fit. That see, rabbit. That is, that is how I justified the huge financial <laughs> entry I, I made into the thing. I was like, I was like, well, I could start a gym membership. Yeah, I was gonna say you could have just gotten a membership for like some weights, <laughs> or I could spend way more and do something fun. Because here's the thing: is I paid for a gym for years, and I went. I could probably count the number of times on two hands over how many years. So, I've kept making uh, gym throughout the pandemic because I don't want to. Uh, I, I didn't want them to like go out of business, and my membership was going to be the deciding factor on whether or not they. <laughs> there you go. Um, but I haven't gone because yeah, like I'm just like, can I go to a gym right now? Like, I don't know. Right. I finally canceled mine. Like, I have a elliptical machine at home, so I was like, huh. I don't See, I actually was. Much, but I do have. <laughs> I actually was going like I was doing better I for like a year straight I'd actually been doing really really well with it and I was like cool like I'm I, I can feel myself making progress I feel myself getting stronger like this is great and the pandemic hit and it was like well exactly I was going at least once a week before but then <clears throat> yeah like I was you know I wasn't like doing a ton like three days just like doing cardio some days, doing, like, weights other days, and, like, I don't know. I, I was slowly making progress. I was making progress. And then, all this. Yes. And I got weights for home, but, like, I'm not... Something about just actually going to a physical location where there's nothing I can do except work out right. uh, is really motivating. 
See, that, that's what I learned about myself, is, like, I was just... I'm ashamed just, like, how monkey brain I am, because I was like, I literally cannot motivate myself to do a gosh darn thing. And as soon as I thought about doing paintball again, and, I, and then I, I went to, like, one practice, I've been jogging, just because, like, I want to do well at that thing, at, like, the thing I'm interested in. And it was just, like, instantaneous, like... If it's linked to to that fun thing and something something not important like you know long term health, uh, you know then then I'm motivated to do it like instantly. Topulus is saying so I had to just buy the second gun. Okay, Topulus, get off my feed. No, don't worry, Commerce Demon, he's get, he's got you. Two so arms, <laughs> a Kimbo. Look, how I'll justify the second gun, all I can say is just look at it. You see, you obviously saw the picture. Just look at it. Oh, so you didn't... I was wondering if, like, you were getting into, like, custom painting your, your guns now. No, I just bought a rare color that was too expensive. A rare color? Yeah. You're letting them Fortnite you in real life? <laughs> yes, the skins, dude. The skins. Oh, my God. The skins, man. It, it looks, it's like a cyberpunk scheme. Like, my loader has, has like, an, an ice, like, two-tone blue-purple stripe on it. And then the, the marker has, uh, like, a purple-to-pink fade. We've lost him. <laughs> you have, I have right here, actually. This is my I-4s right here. Unbelievable. And here's the thing. Well, well, here's the thing too. I didn't expect to get on a team. I, like I didn't, I didn't know what the scene was like out here. And then I made one Facebook post, and everything happened very fast. Uh, so I actually like needed better stuff than I anticipated. Again, it's phenomenal to see a cult in action. Yes, exactly. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a great member. I'm a very impressionable member. But the thing is too is when I get my jersey, the jerseys are pink too. For a team. So, this will match so the got, jerseys. So, you got the gun to match your team? And because it looks cool. But that was like a plus, you know? And it has pockets. <laughs> right. I mean, it has, a po it has a pocket that you put the, the paintballs in. Right. All the guns actually have it. Yeah. It's nothing special. But. Well. Paintball's kind of just gun LARPing, huh? It kind of is. I mean, so the tournament Barbies. game is is definitely... It's, it's nothing like Woods... It's not like a military sim sort of thing. It's more like lightning chess. Ah, uh, yes. What? It's not like it's not like sneaky sneaky stealth stealth. It's like learning the tournament layout beforehand and like knowing your your positions and like your plays. You have like a playbook and you have like your prime spots that you're you're trying to like get your team in a the optimal position like for the the field layout that you've been practicing on. And and it's, and it's more just like how you fill like like the uh, match like one game is going to be like two minutes. And then you're you, uh, you have a certain amount of time, and it's the however many points. He plays many games until the time runs out, and whoever has the most wins from those really fast matches. Uh, what makes paintball paint colors rare? Glitter inclusions in the paint or something? I don't think it's the paintballs; it's the gun itself that has a rare color, apparently. Well, yeah, they just didn't make many in this color. But what I like about it too is like it's not super outrageous color all the way down the barrel. This is just like the carbon fiber color, but there's still the nice flashy bit uh, on the end somebody check if it's legal to show weapons on stream <laughs> we're breaking tos i mean this is a paint stream all the time that has a you know first person shooters and that shows a gun this is Do you want to get painting with a paintball gun <laughs> hey yeah what there you go it's what people are here for have to do it yeah, they come for the paintball content here, right? And that color is gorgeous. Well, apparently, it's rare. All you got to do is get the battle pass and uh, get some <laughs> of the stuff. 
Yeah, this is a mythic rare paintball marker right here. <laughs> I cannot believe it. I mean, I had my airsoft days, so I get it. But, like... The idea of, like, going, like, oh, it's a rare color of, of like, an airsoft gun. You're mostly just like, oh, man, you have something that actually, like, can shoot the, the, the pellet more than 20 feet? <laughs> that's radical. <laughs> well, honestly, that's why I was, like, never drawn to airsoft. That's why I like paintball, because just because they're, like, bigger and heavier, they're more accurate at that speed, you know? Well, yeah, because they actually, like... They like actually fire them. If yeah. there's if there's a light breeze, airsoft is just invalidated. <laughs> I remember playing, yeah, in my friend's backyard, and you're just like curving pellets like wanted out of airsoft guns. <laughs> yeah, dude, playing playing airsoft is way more about being able to like shoot with all the colors of the wind than uh, <laughs> you had to be able to just like read the air around you and figure out like how far ahead of people you had to shoot. Sometimes the best plan is just to shoot straight up into the air <laughs> and let it get carried like 80 feet away. And then he had like the one kid who, uh, for Christmas, like got like genuinely like an automatic like airsoft rifle. Right. Yeah, some of them, they make those suckers like some of those high end ones will, will shoot it just so dang fast that. They're accurate. Yeah. You can get guns that, like, actually do airsoft well. But, like, for the most part, we just had, like, the little pistols. And yeah, yeah. Stuff like that that could not could not deal with wind at all. Right. Ah, well. What are you going to do except complain about it 15 years later? <laughs> on the work. Trying to stop as much of this bleed through as I can. I mean, I don't, I'm gonna I'm gonna put black on top of it, which is gonna help a lot with this stuff. But if I can get it a bit more solid, that'd be nice. A bunch on our team have the older geos, and they're very nice. Do you still play paintball? Is there or is there is there like an active paintball scene in in the UK? Your last last time, uh, Rabbit. His team has a web page. They do all these events, and they had like photos and stuff. What? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I've never had anything better than an E-Tech, so this is the first time I've actually had like that top tier marker. I don't know why, but paintball just seems like a distinctly American thing to me. Yeah, it's all over. There's like big games in Germany, I think. They, there's a there's a professional team that plays the events in the U.S. called Russian Legion, and they travel from Russia. Huh. I haven't used it yet. I just got it a couple days ago, so I'm going to use it on Saturday, the day before I leave for my time off. <laughs> so I got to get it in while I can. Da, 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 da. Let's get it in there. I checked it for leaks and stuff, though, so it seems to be in working order. That's pretty good. Looks like a black on there. It should be solid. Played in Poland, Holland, Germany, and Portugal, as well as the UK. Wow. Wow. Man, imagine it being that easy to go to another country. Man, when my buddy was stationed in the army in Italy, just like on a weekend, they would go to like three countries. It's like the benefit of the EU, right? Yeah. It's like different states, but they speak different countries. Yeah. Man. The only other country I've been to, well, I went to, I was in London for two days, and then I was in Edinburgh for two weeks. 
about? London is a country? Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> Were you at that comedy festival? Yeah, for the Edinburgh or yeah, Edinburgh uh, French Festival. Nice. We performed there. You performed there? Yeah. Dude, that's sweet. That's why we went. That's awesome. Did I leave that part out somehow? Yeah. It's one of the only notable things I've done with my life. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. We, uh... The show we initially were going to do, they didn't get back to us about the rights in time. Oh, no. So instead, we had to go for a public domain option and decided we were going to do an original uh, comedy show riffing on uh, a lot of the Bard's best works called Shakespeare Shattered. And so we wound up writing our own comedy deconstruction of Shakespeare. Hey, that's neat. In, in high school. Uh, to go perform overseas for people who did real theater. <laughs> and the more that I think about it, I should not have been nearly as confident as I was uh, as, a, as a young, dumb child. But hey, you were there, man. Yeah, I was there. I was there! <laughs> um, so yeah, you went to your namesake? What's that? So you went to your namesake? Yes. Nice. Yeah, anytime they... Uh, there there was like a road sign at one point that was like a road like the end of central London, and so it was abbreviated C London. And uh, <laughs> my friend Alyssa took a picture of it. Clunden? Yes, Clunden. Which actually is how I was credited in my first improv show in New York. Clunden. Don't know how? They got my name wrong on the poster. It said Chris Clunden. <laughs> and my family printed that poster out and framed it. And so in my mom's house is an improv poster of the first improv show I did under the name Chris Clunden. <laughs> so good night rabbit night rabbit do 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 let's get back on there I don't know if I'm going to finish getting this all in white. Actually, I guess I have some time. I might be able to finish the white phase on the pedestal of pain. I didn't think I would get through the white phase on all of them. That was all I was really planning to do today, was just get the first step done on all these pieces. That is a big step. Like you said, it's probably one of the more tedious steps. Yeah. this is You have to be so accurate with this one in particular, it feels. And also, you're kind of marking the lines for where you're going to do the other steps. Yeah, so it definitely like, like helps. Pick out, you have to pick out and find all the stuff in the sculpts in this step. And then you can move on to uh, the, the other stuff. It's easier to see like see where all the details are because you pick them all out in the white step. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. Oh, I'm definitely getting old. <laughs> My back is not existing the way it used to, you know? Oh, do I. <sighs> Especially, I had some stretches working from home where, I, you know, I didn't leave this chair for a long time, and boy, would I feel it. Yep. 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 I don't know what's happening, but yep. <laughs> My back's on fire. Yep. My back's on fire. How about yours? My back's on fire. How about yours? That's the way I like it. I never get bored. That's the way I like it. I'll never get bored. I used to be able to play the solo to that song on the harmonica. I figured it out while we were inside a big five sporting goods. 
They're trying to figure out uh, which glove, which baseball glove to get my sister. And it was taking forever. And I had my harmonica on me. So I just started messing around with it and trying to figure out all the notes to play the uh, the solo in All Star by Smash Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. First time I was beginning to get old was when I was like 21. I threw my back out reaching for something on the floor of the car. Woof. That's not a good feeling. Good chair, probably the best money I've spent. Look, man, I've got a pretty decent chair. I'm not in that decent chair right now, which is probably part of the problem. The main issue is, even in that decent chair, I don't sit in it right. Yep, yep. I have all the pillows on this chair and everything, and then I, I, I contort in it. <laughs> You can't buy posture. <laughs> right. Yeah, if I posture. could, man, I would pay a pretty penny for it. If I could make myself just better, I would. <laughs> just mechanically better. I can buy all the fancy stuff I want, but as long as I still got this brain, <laughs> this body, I'm not going to properly utilize any of that stuff. Yep. I don't even think about it. I don't even realize I'm doing it until it's too late. Exactly. Because I also, uh, I also sit with one of my legs under me, which is real dumb. Uh, I have worn out, like, half of my chair because of the way that I sit in it. And so that's not good. But then also, my leg constantly falls asleep while I'm doing that. Yeah, I've been there. And I hate it. But then I just keep sitting that way. <laughs> Do you have a game? Dude, I want to be a teacher. Career thing. Do you have them call you Professor Gamer? <laughs> or like do they see your chair and then like ask you about PewDiePie and stuff? Like do they do they about assume PewDiePie? They yeah, I I switch between what you're talking about with like shoving my legs underneath and then falling asleep and having to be like fully outstretched. Yeah. Oh man, I do that at the office, and I always end up kicking Hazel because for some reason she always lays like right there under the yes, table. Yes. Yeah. And the thing is, just like she's just so quiet. Like she doesn't even react really. She's just like, oh, there is a foot on me. You forget she's a yeah. <laughs> like she does not make any noise. Yeah. Very different from Momo. Right. Yeah. Momo makes sure you know he's around. <laughs> yeah. He he he, he has to assure himself he's around. <laughs> Yeah. Hazel is the quietest, least obtrusive dog I've ever seen. Yeah. And I get that it's because she has crippling anxiety. But I really like it. Well, but so does Momo. He's just on the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> that is true. They're actually both very anxious dogs that yeah. react to it very differently. Yeah, because he's a smaller dog. They're like the whole barking thing is hardwired into him. He would have his good days though. Yeah. He was the first one I met at Dwarven Forge. Because uh, Nina, well, I met Nina at the door and she she brought Momo with her. So I, I've met them both at the same time. <laughs> but I talked to Momo first because there was a dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you didn't talk to Nina for uh, uh, eight days. Right, she's interviewing me, and I'm giving all my responses to Momo. <laughs> no. How long, like, how long have you been? Who's a good dog? <laughs> Momo, well, let the nice lady know that I've been painting miniatures since <laughs> I was 11. <laughs> do you think you can do that for me? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> You're a good boy. Good boy.
do, 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 do. Let's see. Fascinating. Okay. Sometimes, like, I look at this unpainted sculpt and I look at what the final product is supposed to be like, and I'm like, I do not see that this is, I, like, I do not see how these are the lines, but apparently they are. <laughs> I'm just gonna trust that it's gonna it's gonna look that way. Hellscape is weird. Why did we do this? Why did we make Hellscape? Because it looks really cool. That's the main reason. I like Hellscape a lot, but it is weird. Yes. I'm actually kind of happy. This is my first terrain painting experience. Oh, everything will be a breeze after this. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I'm working on the trap door now. Under the rug. What? Oh, cool. Yeah. Then I was working on, like, uh, under the rafters. Man, that thing is starting to really come together. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the finished product on that. It's taking too long, but... I think that's sculpting, man. Yeah. That's why... I want to do all four corners of this house. Hmm. That's why Porch takes so long to, uh, to make. Right. <clears throat> Dread Hello. Hello. Disclaimer: Every every stream that this is not a piece for for, for ASA. <laughs> it's gonna have to be something somewhere though, because it looks sweet. Just like That'd a cool. fun thing. Dread Hall is right? way more work than Hellscape. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Look, there's a lot more details, but you know you're not doing any like feathering business like you are with some of the lava painting. Don't don't tell me that. Until I'm painting Dread Hollow. You gotta give me the holes treatment, you know? Yeah. Right. You gotta be like, yeah, the first hole's the hardest, and the second hole's the hardest. Yeah, the third hole's the hardest. Like you gotta string me along like that. Don't let me know there's worse stuff coming or I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna die. Right. Oh, it's going to all be worth it when I get to drop this on the table on the light panels I didn't get. Yeah, but you have lights. If you want to do lighting, you can do lighting. Yeah, I do have a lamp. <laughs> turn the lamp upside down. Oh. Be fair, my process for Dread Hollow was like 28 steps. So here's the thing. Are you doing OG Dread Hollow or are you doing the new Dread Hollow? Because those are very different things. Probably what I'm going to do is get just like the base stuff down and then I'll go and I'll do like... Hmm. The you know, OFI Wildland stuff, I'm probably just going to get like the grass and stuff done. And then I will go and paint over to get the flowers and stuff later in like a big batch. Where I just do like a detail, uh, a detail pass, basically. That's probably a good idea because it will like, it will look like something sooner and you'll get like some motivation. Yeah, well, it's kind of what I've been doing with Hellscape is it's like, I just, I, I'm getting a bunch of them, I'm doing the white step to get that done. And then like Critical Role will be on. This is probably the last time. It was like I, I was batching like 12 pieces at once, something like that. And I did most of the white stuff on Hobby Hang. And I went and did stuff for a bit. And then Critical Role was on. And while I was watching Critical Role, I did the I did the the red step and then I did the black step. And yeah. I'm trying to batch things. But man, the, the, the white part just is very monotonous. Yeah, honestly, I'm impressed with 12, man. That's a lot for terrain. It um it, it definitely pushed me to my limits, I think. Yeah. I was I was struggling to stay in it mentally. Yeah. Did 
Do, 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 do. Okay, my cat is demanding attention. What's going on? <laughs> Dinner. Dinner, yeah, Dinner. I saw that. I Dinner! Wish get... I wish I could just get another cat to keep her attention. Or keep, keep her company, but she despises other cats. Oh, really? She needs all yeah, the attention? We had, we had somebody bring kittens over once. They, they they got kittens. They wanted to show us. It's like, yeah, we'll see how she feels about kittens. She spent the entire time standing in the doorway on the other side of the room, just hissing as loud as she could at them. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Not the not the least bit of curiosity. Not the least bit like, just immediately like, no, get those things out of here. Oh my god. Well, at least like when he meets a new cat or new dog or whatever, like he gets like hissy and like. Uh, a little bit, like, grumpy towards them, but soon wants to be their best friend. But, like, there's always that kind of, yeah. I wish she was as chill as Dunk is, man. Yeah, but my other cat does not like uh, cats, so that's why Dunk had to get a friend. Just so that he would have a cat that actually would hang out with him? Yeah, because without Chunk, Dunk kept trying to wrestle Zuli, which, you know, she's like 11 and is epileptic. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, cats aren't very good about communicating their medical history to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not going to work out too well. Yeah. Well, that helped her, though, getting all of Dunk. Now Dunk and Chunk are best friends and... He's really stopped having seizures, so all worked out. I do like that it basically had that approach of like, you know, it'll save the marriage having a kid. And oh no, that didn't work at all. Let's have another kid to keep the first kid company, <laughs> and uh, maybe that'll fix the marriage. And then it did. Yeah, and then I just had to foster more because I'm apparently. Uh... Crazy cat lady. Yeah. You don't need to have a kid to save the marriage. You need to have the right kid. Sure. We're, we're talking to, um, when we had Jude in, uh, on Tuesday, they have three mm -hmm. cats. And so they were just talking to Janet about cats for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and we're talking about, like, yeah, I think like 80% of the people in the office have cats. That's like three seems like a small number. For you? Yeah. Well, it's because when I have foster them right now, I'm fostering three kittens as well, so there's seven cats total right now. That's wow. I didn't know you had kittens on you right now. Yeah. I mean kittens are I don't really count kittens as like individual cats. It's like they don't, <laughs> they don't really actually add to the cat count. They stay in the playpen and Oh man! All right. I wouldn't count. Crazy. Oh man! It was fun though because Dunk. I put Dunk in the room with the kitten, and Dunk was like afraid of the kitten. So like, if one of the cats Wait. tried to keep going to Dunk, and then. Dunk was like slowly backing away. Dunk was afraid of the kittens? Yeah, Dunk was afraid of the kittens. I've never seen him shaken by anything. No, he, he just doesn't like new cat, but like new animals. So he's still warming up to them. But like, the little kitten was trying to approach him, and he kept like backing up, like, oh no, don't touch me, don't touch me. Fascinating. That does not line up with the dunk cannon that I have in my head. Dunk is fine with humans in new spaces, which is weird. I mean, especially the new spaces thing for cat, but... That's what I'm saying is my experience with him has been has been him being just, like, totally chill with being in the office during a kickstart. Oh, I remember when he first met, met uh, what's it called? Hazel. Who was hissing at yeah. Hazel. Yeah, he was so cool. He was so cool with the dog. No, he was hissing at Hazel at the beginning. He was? Yeah. Huh. 
He doesn't like new animals the first time, but he'll, he'll learn to love them. I think that's what I need to do to Sally. Yeah. He never got a chance to uh, actually be friends with Momo, though. Bring his to Momo got afraid and didn't want to ever approach him, and that was the only time they were both in the office. Momo stayed here for a couple days. And yeah. Sally was actually better with Momo than she was with the kittens. Huh. She still wasn't, like, great. You know, she didn't want him getting in her space necessarily. But they did both sleep on the bed at the same time. So I don't know. Like, it wasn't a war zone, <laughs> at least. I mean, she would have killed those kittens if they'd stayed here. No! What? Okay. Hamster? Don't, I don't want the kittens to get killed. Well, they didn't. It's okay. They're definitely adults oh, by now. Whew. Okay, good. Okay, good. Thank goodness. Sally the Kitten Slayer. <laughs> Sally the Kitten Slayer. Sally the Kitten Slayer of Kittens. Kitten Slayer of Kittens? Mm-hmm. It takes one to kill one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a pattern. That is horror movie. Uh, subtitle. A, a, a horror movie where, like, the, the, the killer is just, like, a smart aleck kid. <laughs> it takes one to kill one. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're dead? Wait, no, you're... <laughs> Wait. I would actually love that a horror movie where the serial killer, like, every time they try to make a quip, like, they're actually just... They're just not good at it. <laughs> so it's always awkward, but, like, you know, they still end up killing them, so, like, they are terrifying. But, man, they just cannot... They can't land, like, a, their chilling phrase before the murder. That makes it creepier. I like this. So, yeah, somehow it makes it even creepier, actually. Yeah, because like, it gives more of a unsettling, like, psychopath vibe. Whatever. Wow, how are they that good at killing, even if they're that bad at quips? Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you, it throws a hatchet into their forehead. I'm rubber, you're gum. What, what's the saying? I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. Yeah, it's <laughs> I liked that saying a lot as a kid, but now that I look at it, like, man, it really, it gets, it just gets very wordy. Yeah. In the second part, you know? There's got to be, like, a faster I way to I haven't even heard the second part. I just thought it was just not rubber your glue. Well, yeah, that's the whole, that's the thing. Is like, the second part is so wordy, it's not nearly as catchy as the I'm rubber your glue part. Are we, talk, are we talking murder? Yeah, we're talking murder. <laughs> Slapstick murder. Slapstick about murder. Yeah, we're talking about the concept of uh, of a serial of like a, 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 a horror film where there's like a serial killer, but they're not any good at like actually like delivering like a chilling one liner. Like they always like kind of awkwardly flub it, but then they still kill them, and it's still like gruesome and everything. Like everything else is the same. It's just they're really really bad at the catchphrases. Not uh, it's opposite day. Uh, it's opposite day, and you're not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Please, don't kill me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ha, just kidding. It's opposite day. Yeah, you, you, you go Childish. for a... Uh, you got to go to the theater for to groan as a group. Oh, man. Yeah. There's There's something in here for sure. Honestly, just, like, bad serial killer. Like, someone who's, like, aspiring to be the best, scariest serial killer, but they're bad at it. <laughs> like, they always get away? Yeah. They always get away and alert authorities. <laughs> or... If... I 
guess like what do you mean best year of their the most well infamous or just like successful and never got caught he 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 wants to be like one of the I- iconic serial killer you know like or horror movie killers but he's but he's like bad at you know like people that put on like superhero alter egos and he like he can't find like his identity as a serial killer <laughs> i thought he meant he's so good at the uh, killing people that like all the cops just label it as like suicide or accident and just getting upset because you're not getting credit <laughs> I'm, I wanted yes, to know, be in that, the papers. That, that's like an entirely different thing. That's a serial killer that's so good at their job that nobody's even aware that they exist. Yeah. yeah. America's next top killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you audition. You're, 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 you're like pitch your, your horror movie killer identity. <laughs> And it's still uh, Tyra Banks. That's uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the backstage drama is like similar. Like they're in the makeup rooms and stuff. <laughs> it's literally everything is the same, right? <laughs> it's just what she's judging them on is their ability to get away with murder. But yeah, they just like when they come out on the runway, they're like these gruesome killers. <laughs> They, they like are crying when they get kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Movie ends with him successfully getting noticed and getting beat up by Batman, and then finding true happiness. <laughs> I did. Batman just exists in this. Uh... In this reality TV show. Yeah. Or, no, so it's like The Bachelor, but Batman is picking his new rival, and there's all these guys auditioning to be, they're hoping to be his next (laughs) rival. (laughs) Nemesis. He's like, he's like, there's some notable gaps in, uh, in my, in my rogues gallery. (laughs) I really need somebody who can fill these fill these traits. Um, right. You know, Superman got Lex Luthor, and everybody seems really hype about that. And uh, the reality is, I'm more like Lex, Lex Luthor than any of my villains, and I'm not really cool with that. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I can actually see... Has anybody done a take on that? Has anybody done, like, a storyline where Lex Luthor becomes, like, a Batman-style figure? Becomes, like, just the, 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 you know, the millionaire playboy who decides he's gonna be a vigilante? I haven't heard of that. I know, I know they've played with his morality and stuff before. They've done... He's an interesting enough character. Red Sun... Because he always he always gets used as the example of like being lawful evil. He becomes president to fight off Russian Superman, but it's not a secret. I need to read this. That sounds ridiculous, and I kind of I kind of want to see it. There were basically two Batman if Lex Luthor did that, right? It's a what if storyline. Okay. I guess technically, yeah, there'd be one in Gotham and one in uh, Metropolis. Didn't the Snyder films establish that, like, Gotham and Metropolis are literally, like, across a river from each other? So, Metropolis in New Jersey? Basically, yeah. (laughs) That sucks. I'm pretty sure they, like, show them, like, literally... And it's like, wait, so you're telling me... Like, you're you're telling me in, in Man of Steel, Gotham was, like, right there? And you're telling me that in all the Dark Knight movies, Metropolis was right there? <laughs> Superman just didn't give a shit. Or I guess actually the Dark Knight movies aren't considered part of the same canon as the Snyderverse. Yeah, but what else? What is actually canon there? They keep changing everything. 
rebooting things. My favorite thing was when I saw Avengers, uh, my friends, uh, in high school, and we, uh, uh, or not in high school, but with my high school friends when I was back home, and uh, we, we, we left the movie, and Isaac just turned to me and looked at me, and he's just like, where was Spider-Man? <laughs> and it's like, that's a that's a valid point. The answer was he didn't exist yet, but just the idea that they were like, yeah, this is happening in New York City. It's like, huh? It's a shame that the person who's identified by being like, you know, from New York isn't here. Yeah, that's like his thing. Gotham's New Jersey, I think. No wonder it needs Batman. I mean. But how much of like uh, Gotham is supposed to be New York? Because like, I feel like some places are renamed. Like, there's like Middletown, but the, then sometimes they just say there's Brooklyn and that's in Hearst. I don't know. Yeah, so I'm watching Harley Quinn, the, uh, the cartoon. I once bought a CD of cartoons from a man on the subway for a dollar. Uh. And they were not good cartoons, <laughs> but it had a cutaway gag where randomly, for some reason, this is the only time they ever did anything like this in any of the cartoons. They cut away, and they, they're like, meanwhile, at the Batcave, and Batman and Robin are there, and his computer, his big monitor on the wall starts flashing, and it's like a crime alert. And it's like, oh, there's a robbery in Brooklyn. And Robin goes, ah, oh, Brooklyn, Batman, or, yeah, Brooklyn, Batman. And then Batman just smirks at the camera, and he says, let Superman get it. It's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and he just, like, smirks at the camera for, like, a solid three seconds after delivering the line. It just hangs there. But, but apparently in those cartoons, they're like, yeah. Batman doesn't care about Brooklyn. <laughs> Large part of the MCU is from slash in New York. MCU is based in the USA, just kind of poorly. Uh, mean Earth. Yeah, Marvel superheroes in the real world. DC some weird fantasy version of it. Yeah, it seems like a thing. It's just very funny to me. And then there was never any reference... So they introduced the idea that Batman actually did exist in in this cartoon universe uh, version of New York City, but they never get mentioned again at all. But what was this? What was this from? Um, I it's, it's cartoons that this man made. I assume, uh, you but know, it's not like uh, so just something that someone made. Yeah, I bought them, I bought them for a dollar on the subway. <laughs> He autographed it. Oh, he autographed the the sleeve of this the sleeve with a blank CD in it. That Signed he, that he wrote, a copy. Yeah, that he that he wrote Puddin on. <laughs> Puddin was the name of the cartoon character that the whole thing was about. Puddin. It was. It's a it's a bizarre. It's a bizarre collection of cartoons. I've showed it to a couple of my friends. They're they're very, very odd, but they're a good time the whole way through. Outside of the music videos, the music videos are pretty bad. <laughs> like they're just boring. The other cartoons are bad in like just very funny ways where you're just like, why did you decide to say this? Or like what why why is this how you chose to portray this character? Expecting too much out of some guy who just made something and sold, sold out and stuff like that. Oh, no, no, no. no. I, I expected exactly what I got, and I'm not disappointed. Like, it's just, it's so, it's so good. I love it. Batman, Spider Man? Dude, it's a great series. <laughs> I'm Batman. When are they going to make that canon? When are they going to make that when are they gonna make Batman Batman? Uh in Spider Verse 2. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it adds like the end 
the after the credits gag. Yeah. Dude, the after the credits gag in Spider-Verse was so good. It's so good. I would love for them to to go. Well, I don't even know if they would need to get the rights to do Spider Man. Really, maybe, maybe they would. I don't. I don't know. But like, they're not going to fight over. I would love for them to authentically like work that out to just have like a brief Batman Spider Man cameo. <laughs> I come over no. the house. We're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> even if it's just like. As they're like panning some establishing thing, it's like on a computer monitor or something. Like, what a bizarre show! It has Space Dad in it. If Spider Man made it into Spider Verse, it would be legendary. Yes. <sighs> if they ever put like a tuba in the background of any of the shots, I'm gonna assume that's a Bam Man Spider Man reference. Or a sandwich. <laughs> or a sandwich is there. Pumpkin. They had Pumpkin as a character for a few episodes, right? And then it literally, like, went rotten and died. <laughs> New Band of Pumpkin, yeah! Man, I haven't seen that show in years. That really is a pass, though. You were playing it in the office at one point. I was playing it in the office? Yeah. I was been showing it to somebody. Yeah. Probably Mace. Have, have either of you guys seen Joel Havers stuff? Mm, I don't think so. Joel Haver makes weekly short films. Some of them animated, some of them not. He did one animated one that I have had stuck in my head all week. And Tyler and I keep quoting it back and forth. He did The Bachelor, but, but they're monkeys. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and the opening the opening line of the show is thirty monkeys, one monkey. You're watching monkey, <laughs> and, he, and he's standing there with one. He's standing there with one. Uh, he's standing there with the with the bachelor monkey. He's just like, all right, monkey. Are you excited to meet monkeys? <laughs> All right, here comes Monkey. <laughs> it's just, it's that. It's that for two minutes. It's its absolute nonsense, but I, I can't i can't stop thinking about it. That is funny. Good night, Commerce. Good night, Commerce Demon. That's a good name. It's a very, very good name. Oh, I hear the ice cream truck outside. It's ice cream truck time of the year again. Hello. It's me. Da, 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 da. Guys, listen to uh, Carol Benito. Can't say I do. I wonder what you would think of them. I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> I've had one of their songs stuck in my head recently. Well rested. Oh. Pretty good track. Does it give you bonus experience? Yes. Nice. It's a very good electronic music group. Alright. Caro Caro Bonito. Bugsnax? Oh yeah, they also did the Bugsnax theme song. I forgot about that. I need to play Bugsnax. I haven't actually heard the Bugsnax theme song because I'm trying to stay as blind about Bugsnax as I can. What's Bugsnax? You don't know Bugsnax? No. I just want you to watch the trailer without any context, honestly, right now. Like, <laughs> I... Busy. I Trying to explain the premise of Bugsnax to you is going to be very difficult. It's just better if you see it, I think. Okay. Um, 
I'll watch after. Wow. <clears throat> Well, I suppose we're I was, at that time anyway. I, oh, yeah. I was playing Among Us on stream with one, with one of my YouTuber friend groups, and um, my cat often meows at me and is upset when I'm streaming because I'm just sitting in the chair not paying attention to her for a long period of time. <laughs> and uh, yes, hello, I'm talking about you. And uh, she meowed at me at one point, and I just meowed back. And like two seconds later, I just hear, uh, Chris, you're not muted. <laughs> I'm like, well, all right. <laughs> Good to know. Funny. Does it matter? Like, in, among, matter? Generally, yeah, in, a, in Among Us, you're supposed to be muted. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah play that once. But also, it mattered because I was meowing because I didn't think anybody could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's yelling. Well, Sally's right. We're a little over time anyway, so. That wasn't even Sally that time. That was Toby's cat. Oh, that was. <laughs> Sally's not meowing. She's busy walking. Oh, she jumped off the table. I thought she was going to try to eat the cheese. All right. Man, I want to eat some cheese. Don't eat cheese. Eat bacon. Well, hey, so next week, there's going to be the first ever just hobby hang. No hamster. Wait, what? I'm out of town. Oh, right. You're gonna be... Aren't both you and Mace going to be out of town? I think you're right, actually. Yeah. Mace is still out of town. Do we, do we just need to, like, cancel the hobby? What are we going to do? <laughs> you, could just, you, you two could just have a cat stream. Yeah, just, like, have all the cats fight each other. That's not how it works. That's not... Chris's kitty part. We'll do Chris's Kitty Corner, and it'll just be... Chris's Kitty Corner! There you go! You have one cat! We'll just do a hangout stream where it's just... Whoever in the office has a cat and wants to be on stream... Like, we won't even be... We won't even be hobbing or anything. We'll just be... We'll just be, like, holding and petting our cats. I'm just going to put the camera in the kitten playpen. And you guys can just watch that. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll have to think about that, because, yeah, I didn't think about the fact that, uh... Yeah, hamster... <laughs> Hamster is also going to be gone next week. We have so many people gone at once. I think that was all just uh I think Casey's also going out of town. Like, Well, it's like right when, you know, everyone's getting vaccinated and no one has, like, done anything for how long, obviously. And so the first I don't, people are taking the first chance. <laughs> now, now it's, yeah, now it's becoming, like, everybody's taking their trips now that they're fully vaccinated. It's just making it more apparent that, like, no, it's just that I never have plans. Like... <laughs> I, I didn't have any plans until my my dad invited me on his normally it's just his friend's fishing trip and i was like all right man gone fishing gone fishing and otter tail hats. lake in minnesota you okay. you wear those hats are like weird fishing yeah. hat. <laughs> looks like uh Uh, it's just like, fish love me, women fear me. <laughs> oh yeah, those shirts. I love the super specific yeah. ones. They're like, yeah, I was born in October. Yeah, I've got a gun. Those are my favorite shirts. What the, the ones heck? are just like, weirdly specific about just a lot of random things. So is next week just uh, on the anvil then? And then Kitty Corner? I'll probably think of something to... Yeah, maybe we'll do Kitty... Uh, I guess another thing to keep in mind is this Saturday, Nate is playing with the Band of Badgers, the folks that raided us earlier. Nice. Nate's going to be playing uh, some Descent into Avernus with them, some 5e, uh, cool. over on the Band of Badgers Switch channel. That's going to be Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern, I believe it starts. I'll be linking to it in the Discord when the game starts. And I'll be playing with them three Saturdays from now. All right. Yeah. Cool. 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 Well. Great. 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 Nice shot. Nice shot. Okay. Nice shot. Nice shot. Okay. Nice moves. 
Man, I miss passive aggressive uh, Rocket League emoting. Oh my god, yeah. Just like Take the shot. What a save. What a save. What a save. <laughs> yeah, no, I when I was pissed about a goal, I'd just be like, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> God. I was a little stinker in Rocket League. I was uh, always I was always the man who was there in chat with the no problem, you know? No problem. No problem. So like, hey man, don't worry about it. You know? Uh, you know man? That's funny. All right. Well, thanks for. I tried to send another what a save too soon. <laughs> no spamming here, unfortunately. Yeah, Vertex, we've all got our second shots, baby. Hey. I think the whole office has the second shots now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. wow. I think, we, yeah, you're right. That's my, my full immunization day, like, so my two weeks after the second shot was yesterday. So I should be. I'm a god now. You're. <laughs> you have ascended. That's a lot of spots. Yeah. Nice. I've achieved godhood. Nate achieved godhood. I think Toby achieved godhood before us. Wow. Just Actually, a... you, were, you were the first god. God you were squad. The first god? god squad over here. Yeah. God squad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. All right. Hey, thanks for hanging, everybody. Uh, for stay tuned for whatever happens next Thursday. I'm looking forward to finding out what the heck happens. Uh, so Saturday, and then next Saturday we've got, uh, we've got a, a stream with the folks from Asians Represent, oh, cool. uh, doing doing a, a charity stream for Care Tour that we'll be announcing more information about soon. Awesome. About that as well. We'll look out for all that jazz, and we'll see you next time. Have a good night. Here comes God. <laughs>